What is it like living with an electric vehicle? Well, this week, I'm going to find out. I'm going to go about my day-to-day, -day, covering around 600 miles in this Mustang Mach-E. I'm Greg from Peoples, and this is Power Up. In this episode, I'm going to spend the entire week with this Mustang Mach-E. This Mach-E is a premium extended range all-wheel drive model which comes with a 98 kilowatt hour battery and is finished in stunning cyber orange. So we have just picked up the car and it should have 100% charge for us, it's been on charge all day. What I'm going to show you though is if we cut to this camera here, this is a bit of like a live action camera, I'm going to reference this screen and the dashboard quite a lot with this camera throughout the week so you guys can see what's happening on the trip meter and on the range so if i come down here and click into charging we will be able to see that we currently have 100 percent, and that is giving us a range of 323 miles and um, if we come down here and go on to the trip computer obviously we've covered zero miles at the minute uh, it'll give us a trip time and obviously we're getting zero miles per kilowatt hours because we haven't traveled any distance if I jump into the trip computer, this is starting to show something more along the lines of what we are going to see. So covered 1,315 miles, getting around three miles per kilowatt hour. Um, and it's given us a little bit more detail on how the energy is being used with climate, driving, accessories, and exterior temperatures. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset this trip computer so that we can track the whole entire trip. So we will hit reset. And now we will be able to track all the journey and see how we get on this week. So I'm on my way home, day one of five complete. I only have a short commute around 18 miles. So we'll see how that fares on the range by the time we get home. This car being the 98 kilowatt hour battery powered extended range all wheel drive gets according to WLTP around 343 miles. Obviously we were getting 323 there on a full charge. Everyone knows in the real world that you're gonna get slightly less than stated. I have no plans whatsoever to hyper buy all this car or whatever. I'm gonna drive this car as normal. I'm gonna be driving it in the active drive mode. I'm gonna be using air conditioning, heating, I'm gonna be listening to music and we're gonna see how we get on. And we are home. So how do we get on? Jump to this camera again for you guys. So 95% left, 301 miles left. If we jump into the trip quickly, we will see, yep, just under 18 miles traveled so far. Uh, look at that, 59 minutes because of the traffic, unbelievable. And there we go, 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. We've got that up already a little bit, so that is great to see. So yeah, get some food and football tonight. So we've got to go pick the boys up. Let's go. Push the button. Oh. <laughs> That's what meant it, yeah. It's cool. I really like the car. I, would, I wouldn't get it. Uh, but like, the it's, car it's, is so it's nice. nice. It's like the flagship color. Nicer than a Tesla inside. Yeah. How did you know how to do it? Thing to look at it. When I, was <laughs> up, I was terrified. I wasn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> As always, it's an absolute pleasure to drive the Mustang Mach-E around town. Just so effortless, so easy, so calm. It's brilliant. Um, first time the boys had been in an electric car as well, and they absolutely loved it, thought it was stunning. Um, so to round off today, um, we'll jump in here again. We've covered 28.8 miles. Still sitting at three miles per kilowatt hour. Just over an hour and 40 and driving in total. Um, and that is leaving us with 90% battery and 281 miles of range. So, so far so good. We jump for a shower. See you guys tomorrow. Good morning. Day two with the Mustang Mach-E. Nice easy day today. Another run into work. So about another 20 miles. 
Obviously, nothing's changed from last night. Still got 280 miles of range with 90% battery, and we're still looking at about three miles per kilowatt hour at the minute. So yeah, let's get into work. <laughs> So we've just arrived at work and as you'll have seen I have just stuck the Mac E on charge. The car by no means needs any additional battery but I always like to go by the mantra ABC which is always be charging. There's a free charging point I can plug in here for free so we may as well top it up when we can. This is a great time though to talk about Ford Pass. So I'll throw this up on the screen so you guys can see what I'm looking at. So if we jump into Ford Pass, we can see the, the Mac E here. Obviously we've arrived here with 84% battery, 255 miles left in the tank. If we jump into details, this is a great feature. You can see that it's given me an estimated time of finish of 12.37 when we're gonna have a full battery. Current charge rate is 10 kilowatts. We've got the 22 kilowatt chargers here split. Um, so each car is getting between sort of 10 and 11 kilowatts. Yeah, we'll be fully charged by 12.37 and that'll be us on our way again. Day of two out of five complete. Uh, haven't had the car out today. It's been on charge at the office. Um, so we've picked this up with 100% ready to crack on. The car is currently averaging three miles per kilowatt hour. And I know I keep harping on about this miles per kilowatt hour um, figure. But that is an EV's equivalent to MPG. And a good sum to remember is if you multiply the miles per kilowatt hour to the battery size, and in this instance, it's 98 kilowatt hours in this Mach E extended range, you can calculate what your total range would be. So if we do three times 98, you're getting 294 miles of expected range. So obviously if we can get that number up, which we're hoping to do, to see it even 3.3, you do 3.3 times 98, you're getting 323 miles. So we're starting to get closer to where we sort of want to be. Tomorrow, we've got a long run down to Liverpool. Uh, I'm going to the Bootle office. Um, so we'll be able to stretch the Mackey's legs, test out in a long run and see how we get on. So I'll see you in the morning. People often say to me that they need more than 300, 300 miles of range for long distance driving and I'm not convinced. I think my body would give up before this car does in terms of I need the loo, I would need something to eat and I need a bit of a rest. But let's find out. This is also going to be a great opportunity to find out what the public network charging is like. Are we going to be waiting for ages to get onto a charger? Um, how long is it going to take to charge up? I'm going to feel like I'm waiting forever to get back to a usable percentage. And we're also going to, be able to find out how much it's going to cost. So last night I had to do a little bit of running around. Um, so I did use up some more of the percent of the battery just from doing some short runs around town. Um, so if we jump onto the screen here again, just to show you guys, I want to be transparent here in driving this. We're currently on 83% with 247 miles of range ready to set off. So the mach -E is great at route planning to include for charge stops. So we'll jump into this screen again, and we'll go to where to. And I've got Bootle saved here in our favorites. So people's Bootle, there we go. And what the route planner here is doing is it's gonna calculate, there we go, the quickest route. So four hours and five minutes to travel the 246 miles. And it is suggesting a charge and stop round about Lancaster. That is saying it's gonna take us 15 minutes to get back to a usable percent and we will arrive at our final destination with 16% battery. This is a great feature. I think a lot of electric cars have this, but it's really handy that it's telling you your distance and it's including your time for charging and your total journey time. So we'll get in our way and see how we get on. An awesome feature to touch on whilst we're on this long drive is Ford's Blue Cruise. I've been using this feature for the last hour, hour and a half of driving, and it's incredible. We've actually made quite an in-depth video on Blue Cruise, which you can link up here if anybody wants to watch it. But in short, Blue Cruise is the closest thing you'll get to autonomous driving in the UK. 
Um, what Blue Cruise will do is it'll do all the steering, all the braking and all the accelerating for you on any motorway in the UK. And I thought it'd be worth showing you guys how to activate Blue Cruise. It's really, really simple. All you have to do is hit your normal cruise control button. You'll see the screen in front of me goes blue and it says hands-free. You can now take your feet and hands off all the controls, sit back, relax and let the car do all the work for you. This will do all the steering and all the accelerating and the braking, as I've already said. Okay, so we're pulling off. It's three hours of driving I've done. Bursting for the toilet and ready for a break. We're at Killington. Um, the cars actually want me to go another 15 miles to a rapid charger at the at the Porsche Centre. That's saying it's on the Ford network. Um, but. I need a toilet and I want some food. So I'm going to see what's available here on the grid serve. Okay, looks like we've got a 40 kilowatt available, which is what they're calling a fast charge. It's not that quick, but it's better than nothing. Let's get plugged in. Okay, so we got a slot plugged in. Took the contactless payment easy enough, which is straightforward. But we've done about three hours driving there, which was good. According to the trip, I think we've done, you'll see on here, this trip so far, 171 miles, which is quite good. Um, if we go back into here, we've only got 74 miles um, left to go. So um, as you can see in here, it's saying there's 47 miles left on the range, currently 18%. We'll be at 80% by four o'clock, but we won't need anything like that. So I'm going to jump in for the loo, get some food. It is currently 10 past one. Um, so we'll see how we get on and see how much charge we've got once I'm finished having some food. Okay, that's us off the charger now. Uh, charge a little bit longer than, than I actually planned to, but I got chatting to some of the other EV owners who were, who were waiting to get on to the chargers. Obviously we're only getting 20 kilowatts a, a power there, so, so not that quick. But by the time I'd been in to the toilet, quite a big queue at McDonald's there, got some food, came out, had a chat, I was ready to, to leave anyway. Uh, I've got Ford Pass here, so I'm just going to jump on and show you guys kind of how we got on. So we're at 37% charge level now with 103 miles. Um, and if I go into vehicle here, I can go to the charging log, so jump into charge logs. And you can see here we added 22%, uh, roughly about 65 miles there and it was a total charge time of 54 minutes. Um, so, and we were getting charged 69 pence per kilowatt hour. We added about 19 kilowatt hours there. So it worked out about 13 pound there for 65 miles. Obviously a lot more expensive than if you're charging it at home on the out of hours tariff. But um, plenty of juice left for us now. So yeah, 102 miles, like I said, with 37% battery. We only have 73 miles left to go. And it's saying we'll arrive at Bootle dealership with about 10% left in the battery, which should probably leave me enough also to get to the hotel afterwards tonight. So we'll get on the final stretch now and be on our way. And we've made it. That's us here in Bootle at the dealership. Uh, we've got, let's just jump up here so you can see, 11% um, battery left, 30 miles of range. So made it with plenty. Plenty of range in the tank there. Um, jumped to the trip. And we can see here now, obviously we spent nearly 10 and a half hours in the car in total up until this point on, on Wednesday. Done 342.6 miles. And we're still getting, oh, we're up to 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour, which is great to see. So yeah, got to nip in here, got a few things to do. And then we'll get round to the hotel tonight and see if we can get on charge for the night there. Okay, so we've made it to the hotel uh, car park, multi-storey, and we have these EV open uh, type charge boxes. Pretty straightforward, it says download the app, scan the QR code on the side, and you'll be able to charge the car. So let's download the app. Okay, I've downloaded the app. Um, it says scan the QR code, see if this works, fingers crossed. Boom. Paddington Village, type 2, 16 amp, 3.6 kilowatts, 
Um, I can choose the kilowatt hours required, so I can go to full, pay as you go, and they're charging us 49p a kilowatt hour. So, a little bit cheaper than what we were paying on the motorway on the M6 for an MP. So, I'll get this loaded up just now, get charging, and that'll be us done for the day. And there we go. Charge session has begun. Really straightforward, just pop the guard details, plug it in, and we're away. Obviously, this is a two kilowatt charger, so it's gonna be mega slow. I think in the car it's saying it'll be fully charged by, by Friday. But, like I said, ABC, always be charging. We'll leave this on overnight, let it charge away, and then tomorrow, hopefully, we can pick up a quick charger on the way home, top it off, and get back up to Edinburgh tomorrow. No hiccups at all with the EV open system overnight. I was regularly checking four pass just to see how we were getting on uh, on the, the two kilowatts. So we'll jump into four pass just now, just show you guys where we're at. So we got a 58% uh, charge level now with 164 miles in the tank. If we just jump into vehicle again and go charging and charge logs, we will see this one here. So we added 52% overnight. 145 miles and it was on charge for 13 hours 50. I know that sounds like a long time, but by the time I plugged in and then just went to the hotel and relaxed like you normally would, you don't really think about the time. So yeah, plugged in at 6% and ended at 58. So not too bad, 50 kilowatts in total added. So if we just jump back into the, the Vend Electric app, if we jump into charges, we'll see there we're charged £24.51. So again, like I said last night, that was 49 pence per kilowatt hour. Um, Again, obviously more expensive than charging a home, but not the end of the world. And like I said, ABC, always be charging, giving us enough juice now to get more than halfway up the road back to Edinburgh. Two and a half hours, 130 miles, getting 3.3 miles per kilowatt hour, which is pretty nice. There's a queue. So whilst we wait, probably worth having a look at how we got on. Um, I can't really go much further. I've only got 32 miles left at 11%. I also really badly need the toilet. Obviously it's still 25 degrees outside. I've been using um, air conditioning, climate control the whole entire trip there. Um, and what I'm really enjoying is there's not been any fall off in the range. So that kind of debunks everybody that says you can't run climate control and you can't listen to your music when um, you drive an electric vehicle. Okay, we're up. Only a 14 minute wait to get on. Go. Oh. So hopefully this should be pretty straightforward. So scan here. Opens up the app, start charging, boom. Uh, I have the terms and conditions, accept. Apple Pay, make it nice and easy. Payment successful. Preparing. Here we go, charging. Okay, we're on, we're charging. Um, jumping at the four pass app, we click it. So you can see here, we're getting 148 kilowatts, much better than a, than a 20. And it's saying estimated finish time for 80% is 28 minutes past two. I'm just gonna run away, get some food, come back and we can be on our way. I didn't know, but just down at the service, he's around the petrol station. There's another one, two, three, four, five, six quick chargers around here. And there's actually a couple of them free. So Gretna is definitely a great stop if you're looking for quick fast charging that was more like it i just um pulled out there to let somebody else into the chargers i literally as soon as i got plugged in ran down to waitrose grabbed a sandwich ate it on the bench outside came back and we had 75 percent battery i couldn't have been any quicker so if we jump on a uh, four pass again you can see 70 percent 219 miles now and if we go to vehicle and go into the charge logs again we can see here that we added 62% battery 
Estimated distance area was 181 miles and we're only on charge there for 36 minutes. We added about 58 kilowatts and it was 74 pence a kilowatt. So that was about 42 pounds for that charge there. Obviously much quicker than yesterday's 20 kilowatt and last night's 2 kilowatt. Um, and obviously we only had a wee 10, 15 minute wait which wasn't too bad. If we have a quick look here at the screen, what's left for the rest of the trip, we've got 87 miles left to go, so we've now got plenty in the tank, so we should arrive at Edinburgh with about 44% charge. It's worth acknowledging that when you purchase your Mustang Mach-E, you'll actually get five years free access to the Ford Pass charge network, and what that means is you'll also get a year's free premium access to the Ionity charge network. And basically what that means is you'll get a reduced rate from the 74 pence that we just paid to the 56 pence per kilowatt hour charge, which will make a huge difference over the year if you're having to use the public network. Okay, so that's us back in Edinburgh. That's the about 500 mile round trip complete over the last couple of days. I thought we'd just quickly jump into the screen again before I hop into the office for the last few hours of the day. We can see in here that We've now done 573 miles in total and a crazy whopping 17 and a half hours in the car. Really enjoyed that time so far. And we're still sitting at 3.1 miles per kilowatt. And if we just hop into charging, we left Gretna with 75% and we're now at 47 with 134 miles of range. So plenty to get home tonight. I think the big takeaway from, from that trip was we got a really good varied feel for charging. We got the 20 kilowatt on the on the southbound side when we're heading down to Liverpool. And then when we got to the hotel last night, we got a feel for what like two kilowatts would be um, overnight on a long 13 hour charge. And then today we got to see what the 150 kilowatt quick charger is like and how fast we can really get this car up to a really usable percentage and range. So I'm just gonna hop into the office and then we'll get home later on tonight. Okay, pull onto the driveway home sweet home day four or five complete obviously not much has changed since we left edinburgh in terms of mileage and range but for transparency i just want to show you guys where we're at so we'll quickly just jump up here and look at the range 112 miles with 39 percent and if we go back to the trip computer which we've been following all week we're now at 591.5 miles and we're still getting 3.1 miles to kilowatt hours which is good so tomorrow's our last day commute in to work, and then we will round off our thoughts and feelings with the Mustang Mach-E this week. See you in the morning. Good morning. It's Friday, and it's the final commute into work in the Mustang Mach-E. I'm actually really sad about handing this car back. I've really, really enjoyed driving this car for the week. And for me, and hopefully for you guys, it's been a great insight into ownership of an EV. Okay, so just pulling in to the charging point for the last time at the Edinburgh dealership. Uh, but before we go any further, I think we should just show you guys the trip computer and the range for the last time. So we've just finished up with 88 miles um, and 33% left in the battery. Obviously last time I charged this was on the fast charger at Gretna. And if we jump over to the trip computer for the total trip, you'll see now we've done 609.1 miles. So we've tipped over that 600 mark, which is great. And we've spent nearly a whopping 19 hours in total in this car over the course of this week. And I have to say, I've absolutely loved every minute of it. And lastly, we have been averaging 3.1 miles per kilowatt hour. Obviously, I was harping on about this quite a lot at the start of the week. Why that's important is, again, if you go back to the sum that I was talking about, if you multiply the size of the battery, which is 98 kilowatt hours, uh, by the 3.1, that will give you what you're doing on average for your range, for your battery size. So that means we're averaging around 304 miles this week out of a full charge, which WLTP are advertising 343 miles, real world 304 miles, I think that's pretty good. So to conclude things, let's talk about costs, the network itself, and lastly, the car. Let's start with costs. So I've actually got some notes here that I'm going to refer to so I get the numbers right. Um, but if we look back through the week, if we look at the GridServe stop, um, which was our first stop on the way down to Liverpool, 
we put in 20 kilowatts of energy at 69 pence per kilowatt, which totaled to 13 pounds 25. The next stop, if you remember, was the hotel car park where we plugged into the wall using the app, which was actually worked perfectly. Um, we actually put in 50 kilowatts that night at 49 pence per kilowatt, which totaled 24 pounds and 51 pence. And then lastly, yesterday, which I got excited about, was the Ionity Fast Charge Network. Uh, we put in 57 kilowatts there at 74 pence per kilowatt, which told 42 pounds and 51 pence. So, as the week as a whole, we had a total of 127 kilowatts to the vehicle on the public charging network, um, which cost in total 80 pounds and 27 pence, which averages back to about 60 pence per kilowatt. That added a total of 391 miles to the car, which on the face of it doesn't sound very cheap. Um, I never set out to do this on the cheap. I just wanted to take the car for a week, go for a drive, use the network and see how we, we got on. We all know the M6 is expensive for fuel, EVs charging and even food. Um, so it's actually worth considering what a, a normal combustion powered engine car would have done those 391 miles in. So if you take an average of 35 miles per gallon um, for an SUV of this size and the fuel cost, let's say £1.65, and I know you're paying more than that on the M6 at some stations, you would pay around £83.30 for that 391 miles of fuel. So it's actually kind of comparable and actually the EV is slightly cheaper. For me though, the big takeaway is if you charge this car at home. Currently I had a look just there, the overnight rates on the Octopus off-peak charging is 7.5 pence per kilowatt, meaning if you were to charge the same amount, so 127 kilowatts, 391 miles, that would only cost you £9.53, which then it starts to really make sense. The network, in general, I actually found it quite a breeze, um, whether you had to download an app, scan a QR code, or just pay simply with with your Apple Pay, there was no hiccups or issues there. Getting on charge as well during the height of the summer holidays, we got straight on at our first stop at the hotel. I was the only one car charging out of 12 available spaces. And then yesterday in the fast charge, yeah, we had to wait 10 minutes to get on, but it wasn't the end of the world. Or I could just pop around the corner to the service station and plug into one of the available fast chargers there. And then lastly, the car. The car is incredibly comfortable. It's an absolute joy to drive, great to be in, and I loved every single minute of being with this Mustang Mach-E. Uh, range fall off, or the lack of, for me was really impressive. A lot of people said to me, if you're using your conditioning, or if you're listening to your music, you're gonna see a lot of loss in total range. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with the Mustang Mach-E. I actually started to really trust the car, um, and if it said I had 100 miles, I knew I could nearly get that 100 miles out of the vehicle. You'll see I was pulling at the stop, so leaving 8, 9, 10% charge. So that trust really built up over the course of the week. And lastly, how good does this car look? Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I've enjoyed making it. And I hope there's some takeaways there for you if you're considering purchasing an EV or a Mustang Mach-E like we have here. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Please let us know if you've got any questions in the comments at all and we'll come back to you and we'll see you in the next video.